Hi, and welcome to Lecture 3 in Coursera's Instrumental Analysis class. I'm Professor Colvin. What we're going to be doing in this lecture is continuing our chemistry review, moving from dimensional analysis to finding concentrations in solution. Really the best way to do this is through examples. But to remind you, concentration tells you in any given solution how much of a material you might have. And so it's really got two types of units. It's got the measurement of the weight or the moles or some how much stuff you have on the top. And on the bottom, it's per volume, some volume of solution. It turns out to be one of the most fundamental units in a lot of instrumental analysis, because most instrumental analysis starts with a sample that's been put into the liquid phase. So understanding the concentration of materials in that sample is the essential measurement you typically make. So to do a concentration calculation, what you're basically going to do then is you're going to have something on the top, which is a measurement of the mass, could be a measurement of the moles, it could be the volume of the thing you're interested in. For example, in the case of lead and baby toys, it's going to be the amount of lead, either micrograms of lead or moles of lead. And then we're going to divide that by how much solution volume we've got, because it's a very different matter to have a milligram of lead in a liter versus a milligram of lead in only a milliliter. So you have to divide out by the total volume of the solution, and that's on the bottom. So you get an amount per volume, and that's the concentration. And there's a lot of different types of concentrations. We're going to be going over some in the case studies. I suggest you look up things like parts per billion, which is one microgram per liter solution, molarity, which is moles of what you're interested in per liter solution, and finally ppm, parts per million, which is milligrams of the amylate of interest divided by the solution volume. There are other solution volumes out there like molality. We're not going to cover that. Uh, the only other ones you're going to encounter in these lectures might be things like weight percent or volume percent, but those are going to be far more rare. Our three most important ones are going to be molarity, parts per million, and parts per billion. Okay, so we're going to start to do some simple calculations about finding the concentration of solutions and also using the concentration, if it's given, to find something else out about the solution. So these are pretty straightforward, very similar to the dimensional analysis work we did in the past lecture. I'm going to work these out by hand. So in a second, we'll zoom into these, and you can see me and my thought process as I go through them. OK, so let's start this, sample, this example by writing down our given 345 milligrams of sodium sulfate. And we want to get to molarity. And that definition is moles per liter. So what I'm going to have to do in this calculation is go from milligrams to moles and divide by liters. This is an example also where there are two givens. One is 0.345, the other is the liter. So we're going to need to use both of those. So we're going to first, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the milligrams because pretty much we're going to want to do everything in grams. So there's that conversion. Then I'm going to use the molecular weight of sodium sulfate to go from grams to moles. Remember, we did this in the last lecture, and that was 145 grams of sodium sulfate in one mole. So we can make a conversion, which is effectively equal to one. Then I'm going to remember that I'm, be, I'm given a liter. So by putting that on the bottom, I'll have the definition for molarity. Now, here's the last trick. If you end up canceling all your units here, what you're going to find is that you cancel this, cancel the grams, and you get moles per liter. That's actually molarity. And you could stop there if you wanted. But a better thing to do if you want to be really consistent is to when you have a definition, you can write one mole per liter on the bottom is one molar. The definition of molar as being equal to moles per liter means we can treat it as a conversion and include it so that when we get our numbers out, we'll have the perfect units. And what we get, now sometimes I'll write molar with a bar over the top to distinguish it from a big M. So what you see in this analysis is a couple important things. First off, we had two givens, and we use them in two places in our calculation. The second thing that I think is important is that we ended up using the definition of molarity as a conversion. And what that means is if one molar is equal to one mole per liter, 
you can write it as a conversion factor, just to be really clean about your units. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So again, we're going to start with our given. Now we're given moles, and we're given aluminum nitrate. And what we need out at the end is actually ppm. And I know that that is going to be milligrams per liter. So right away, we've got to get from moles to grams, which is a very common thing to have to do. And I happen to remember the molecular weight. If I have one mole of aluminum nitrate, I know that that's going to be equal to 26.98 grams of aluminum. Now, I did a funny thing here, and I want to make sure that that's obvious to everybody. We know we have one mole of aluminum nitrate. And in one mole of aluminum nitrate, there is one mole of aluminum atoms. And if you look way up here at the top, what you're going to see is that we care not about aluminum nitrate, but about aluminum. So if we had used the molecular weight of aluminum nitrate here, we would have gotten the wrong answer because we would have been calculating the grams of aluminum nitrate. With this one, says grams of aluminum. That's why we use the atomic weight here. Then what we're going to be multiplying that by is a conversion that takes us to milligrams. Because remember, at the end, we want milligrams. Then we're going to be using our other given, which is 0.500 liter, given in the problem. And then finally, the definition 1 ppm, which is equal to 1 milligram per liter. And when we put all that out, we're going to get 5396 ppm. So what we can see is that we use two givens here and here. And the other thing we can see is the cancellation of units. This is what we want. And then finally, this cancellation. And this important distinction, which is when you want something about aluminum, you have to remember to use the atomic weight and not the molecular weight. OK, so let's do a few more examples. OK, so let's do a few more examples. These are going to go a little bit faster. I'm going to just uncover the answers on the screen. If you want, you can pause them. So we're going to start with a 1.023 molar solution of sodium phosphate. And I'm asking how many moles are in sodium, how many moles of sodium are in the sodium phosphate. So the first thing you have to know is that phosphate carries a minus 3 charge. So to make a salt, you have to have three sodiums. So you need to figure out the molecular weight of sodium phosphate, which I've already done. It's 120 grams per mole. You can go check that if you want. Now, we're going to start with a given, which is 1.023 molar, shown here. Shown here, there's our given. But remember, we're also given 10 mils. So these numbers are our two givens. And what I'm basically doing by multiplying them together is figuring out how many moles of sodium phosphate did I have in the 10 mil portion that I took out. Now remember, I figured out how many moles of sodium phosphate, but what I care about is moles of sodium. So I need to do a conversion here, and this is just like the conversion in the last example where I realized one mole of sodium phosphate has three moles of sodium. So you got to put that in, and I call that reading the chemical formula. If you read the chemical formula, Na3, PO4, it's three sodiums for every one phosphate. And that's what we're writing down here. There are three sodiums per one sodium phosphate. You multiply that, all that out and you get your answer. So let's do the next example. So in this case, we're going to be asking how many atoms of aluminum are in a microliter of one part per billion. So let's think a little bit about our givens. Clearly, one given is the microliter and the other is PPB. And what you might have forgotten that PPP is one microgram per one liter of solution. So we start with our givens, one PPB, and we're going to convert PPB right away in this conversion to micrograms per liter. So I'm, again, I'm using the definition of PPB here to do the conversion. Then as you can see, as you read across, what we're doing is converting from microliters to liters. And then we have micrograms of aluminum nitrate. We need to pull it to grams. And then we can go to grams to moles, and we get a number of moles of aluminum nitrate. Now, if you didn't know or don't remember, what you need to remember is that atoms is related to moles. 
through Avogadro's number. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of anything is equal to one mole. Avogadro's number is a lot like a dozen. If you have a dozen apples, you have 12 apples. Well, if you have a mole of aluminum, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's like a really, really big dozen. Okay, so what we've done in this particular line is we've calculated the moles of aluminum nitrate. Now we need to use Avogadro's number to go to atoms. So as you see here, we start with a given. You just realize that one mole is one mole of aluminum, so you don't have any factor of three like you did in the prior example. Because if you read the chemical formula, one mole of aluminum is present in every mole of aluminum nitrate. So it's a one to one. And here is Avogadro's number. What this does is it takes us from moles to atoms of aluminum. And then in the end, we have 2.8 billion atoms of aluminum present in that sample. So let's do another example. So in this case, we've got 50 mils of a pretty dilute stock that you want to make, and you're given a one molar solution. So clearly this solution is a lot more concentrated. We're going to have to dilute it to make our 0.050 molar. So for the first thing that we're going to do is calculate how many moles do we need in the final solution. All the moles have to come from the concentrated solution. So to do that, it's just 0 0.050 liters. Note that what I've done is I've converted. It's not uncommon to go ahead and do that. It's not uncommon to go ahead and do that kind of on your own without doing a formal piece of dimensional analysis. Now we're going to multiply by molarity. Okay, so what we see here is that we need 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of aluminum in our 50 mil solution. So how much stock will give us? How much of concentrated one molar? gives 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. To do that, we start with 0 0.0025 moles aluminum. And now we do some dimensional analysis. Now remember, the stock solution is aluminum nitrate. And in this case, it's a pretty easy conversion because aluminum nitrate, one mole of aluminum is in one mole of aluminum nitrate. Finally, we do the conversion to mils, and we're going to get, so to do this, we're going to take 2.50 mils of stock. We're going to add it probably to a 50 mil volumetric, and we're going to dilute to 50 mils with water. There's another way to do this that's less conceptual, but more efficient. And to do that, you're going to remember that M1V1 is equal to M2V2, where this is one solution. Maybe it's the dilute one, and this is a concentrated. And M refers to molarity. So this is kind of a plug and chug, but if you look at what we're asking for, we want to know how much stock. So really the question is, if this is our dilute one, how much of the concentrated stock do we need? So let's see how about how to apply that. This is just going to turn into 0 0.050 liters. That's the mils. We know it, we want it to be 0 0.050 molar. So there's our dilute one. We know we have a one molar concentration to start, and V2 is what we're looking for. So when we solve for V2, we just get 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 liters, or 2.50 mils. So these are really functionally the same calculation. This one relies on a formula that you'll just memorize. This is a little bit more conceptual. You can do it either way. All right, let's do this last example. This is a kind of hard example, so I'm going to actually write it out for you. In this case, we're going to have to really be visualizing what's going on. It's not like a simple conversion. You have to set up kind of a lengthy calculation and really think through all of the steps that are present in it. I always find it helpful in these kinds of problems to make a drawing in which I sort of specify, okay, here is the starting solution of lead. And it's an unknown thing. I don't know how much of it I have, but I'm going to take a small portion of it and I'm going to put that into a much larger volume or my little two mils is still there, but it's now getting diluted. So this is a dilution. And it's a little bit weird because we have to work backwards. We know, for example, that we took two mils. We know that this is X molar. We don't know that. And we put it into 0 0.500 liters, and we got a concentration. So our other challenge is we've got things in terms of molarity and PPB. And those are both issues of things we're going to have to deal with. So let me show you how I would approach the problem in a more conceptual framework 
rather than using the M1B1 example. So the first thing I'm going to do is take 10.3 parts per billion and I'm going to start to convert that out. So this is what we had in the final solution over here. And what I have effectively done in this section is I've calculated how many, how much lead in final in micrograms. Okay, so I figured out from this then how many micrograms of lead were in the final solution. They all had to come from the same place. Now what I need to do is convert things to moles because I need molarity out at the end. I need to know molarity of this, so I need to get rid of grams. So I'm going to do that by saying for every gram of lead, if I have 207.2 grams, I have a mole. And this is, of course, just the atomic weight of lead. And now, now we're in an interesting stage because what I've done is I figured out the moles of lead that were transferred. And the problem wants me to get to molarity. So what I'm finally going to have to do is divide by the solution that led to that. So remember, all of that lead only came from two mils of this stuff. The problem is you don't want molarity in terms of mils. You want it in terms of liters. So you do this last little conversion. And you get 1.24 times 10 to the minus 5 molar in your unknown. So I hope those examples were useful. You'll be seeing some of the simple ones on quizzes, and you'll be doing a few in your problem sets. Thanks so much, and see you next time.